Uh, the first thing that I'd like to say is that um, the wonderful thing about being at Missouri is so many folks that are sitting in this room are innovating. They're in, innovating in exciting ways, and, and Clyde, and, and Mike, and all, Convergence as a whole, Broadcast as a whole, everybody is really, really out there on the edge, um, really formulating the next group of people that are heading into the industry. So a tip out to all of you, and thank you to Dean and to Linda for creating the room under emerging technologies, which is a great area to be able to, uh, to teach this course. A year ago, Randy came to me and as a consultant with RJI, he said, go out to newsrooms, ask them a very simple question. How can we help? And so that's what I did. I went to all the newsrooms on campus, and we have a lot of wonderful ones. And I kept hearing the same thing over and over again, and that was, we need more bandwidth. We need more bandwidth to be able to address the problems that are going on in our newsrooms. And so if you can help with that, particularly as regards rapid iteration, multi-platform content deployment, we're all in. And so what we did was we got commitments from six different newsrooms. And we create, I went out and, rec uh, and recruited about 18 students and basically, uh, I built SWAT teams, SWAT teams of rapid iteration multi-platform content creators who could create the bandwidth that didn't exist before in those newsrooms. It was very successful. A lot of people were very happy. What we did was we really focused on a couple of things, strategize, build, create, measure, analyze, systematize, replicate, and create manuals, portfolios, processes, and understanding. It is now morphed into something that more looks like a systems and structures course, a course about constant disruption, about pivoting, about reinventing organizations. We are capitalizing on the great Mizzou curriculum. We are also uh, taking these students who have all these broad skills. We are putting them in real newsrooms and affecting real change. Today, you're going to hear from one team, one of our six teams, the team that has been embedded in the Global Journalist uh, uh, newsroom to sort of give you an idea a little bit of what they are doing and the kinds of projects that they are creating. I could have all six teams up here and I think you'd be very impressed with their portfolios of what they're doing. But without further hesitation, the team. Great, thank you. Uh, so, Julia, could you? Uh, so we are working with a uh, news organization called Global Journalists, which produces multi-platform content um, about the state of press freedom, um, and it covers developments in international journalism, and it serves international journalists. So some of the content that Global Journalists produces includes um, a weekly radio show that airs on our NPR affiliate here, um, online articles that go on their website, and then they're also working on a digital iPad edition for Apple's newsstand. Uh, so when we got this assignment, the first thing we did is we formulated a strategy. Um, so each team member, we all performed a SWOT analysis, um, evaluated the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we saw within Global Journalist. Um, and looking at all of our SWOT analyses, we decided to focus on a couple of key things. Um, so we focused on building an audience um, and strengthening that Global Journalist brand. Um, we also wanted to focus on strengthening audience engagement uh, through social media. Uh, we wanted to create visual content optimized for multiple platforms, whether that's mobile or desktop. Um, we also wanted to repackage and repurpose content, um, whether it was from last week or from several months ago, um, for strategically for multiple platforms. And then we also wanted to create a platform to provide context for world events. So one of the things I've been working on um, is I do analytics. Um, so every week I send a report to the team um, using a couple of different tools, Google Analytics, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Bitly, um, and we look at all the different, um, you know, who's been going to our site, um, stuff like that. Next slide. Okay, um, and so uh, the next thing, one of the things we did, you can see, um, we focus on referrals. So we looked at traffic by location, um, we looked at keywords searched, um, and then we also looked at the reader behavior. Um, and then what we did is we, I summarize it and I analyze it, so I kind of give a broad overview of what's been going on for that week, um, and then provide a takeaway um, after analyzing uh, the data that we have. Um, one of the things that I think has been really key in this um, is that we've identified some of the key referrers to the Global Journalist website. So we've identified that educators like to use their co our content um, in their curriculum. Um, so we've been asking questions about how can we better serve them. Um, and we've also uh, been looking at how uh, SEO uh, optimized headlines have been doing um, and what works and what hasn't worked in terms of search traffic. 
Another thing we've done is we've looked at outreach. Um, so we've identified people who have previously um, engaged with our content using analytics um, and then also reaching out to Global Journalist staff members. Um, we've also identified people who might be interested in our content, so those educators, bloggers, LinkedIn influencers, um, journalistic connections that we have. Um, and we've done that through uh, reaching out to global journalist staff members and then also by doing research. Um, and then what we're working on right now is that uh, we're gonna use email to invite them to engage with us on social media, um, introduce them to story packages that might be relevant to them. For example, uh, for educators, we're creating one um, with some of the content from our Missouri Honor Medal Master Classes. Um, and we're also, um, you know, ethics uh, stories that we've done. And then we're also inviting their feedback. So if they've used our work in the past, um, or if they're using it, we want them to let us know, hey, did it work? Um, did it help serve your purpose? What can we do um, you know, to better serve you next time? And so that's another example of one of our um, analytics slides that I have. Uh, another thing that I've been working on um, is their LinkedIn presence. Um, so I did some research at the beginning of the course to, um, to see how LinkedIn functions, particularly the company page and the LinkedIn groups, um, are best used. Um, and so what we did, we had a LinkedIn group. Um, there were maybe about 35, 40 members in it. Um, we repurposed that group uh, instead of just kind of a feed with our stories um, as a platform for conversation and engagement among professionals um, interested in press freedom and in um, international journalism. And so um, the audience now, it's, there are more than 130 members in the group, um, and it's growing every day. Uh, we also established a LinkedIn company page as a platform to share content, um, more of a static thing. And then we also um, are striving to inform and engage others on this platform while at the same time strengthening the global journalist brand. We also um, changed the Twitter strategy up a little bit. Um, we have had in the past some more news um, headlines, and what we're doing is we're trying to create a little bit more of a voice. Um, so one of the things that the Global Journalist editor said is they'd like to appeal a little bit more to the millennial audience. Um, so we've been using a little bit less formal language, um, as well as using hashtags. Uh, we've also increased the interactivity and relationships with Twitter users, so we've been asking questions, encouraging them to engage with us on it. And we've also been tweeting with a global audience in mind. Um, so we've, if we have a story, for example, um, that might appeal to an audience in South Africa. We don't think about, you know, who's going to be reading it over here. We're going to be thinking about what time they might be reading it over there. And so we take that into account um, when we post our tweets. Uh, we've also been optimizing content for mobile, particularly visual content. Um, this is something that Julia has been working a lot on. Um, so we found that people really like visual uh, data-driven information. Um, so she's created photo cards um, that we use uh, to advertise for our radio show that week. Um, we also have created infographics. Um, that's an example of one that we tweeted out a couple weeks ago. Um, and then we've also, and that's just another example too of how we've been visualizing um, data that we use with Global Journalist. We've also been repackaging content. So we published um, something about the Scottish referendum several months ago. Um, but when the vote was coming up, uh, we took that content that we had already published, uh, repackaged it into an easy to, easy to consume infographic, um, and then sent it back out um, for our readers. So this was something we'd already done in the past, um, but we just made it a little bit different um, and a little bit more timely. Um, hi, I'm Zara, um, and I'm from India as uh um, Mr. D uh, Rani Pitt mentioned, and uh, I was talking to my parents at the beginning of this year, and we were, since I'm a journalist, they're back in India, most of our conversations include politics, and we were discussing the Chimaltas politics in Egypt, and uh, I, was telling, I was telling my mother about uh, Sisi, and uh, she was really confused because she didn't know what had happened before and uh, what were the problems in Egypt, and after completing my entire um, opinion piece about what I thought was happening in Egypt, she asked me, she was like, but why is there so much unrest there? And I was like, mom, now I have to tell you everything from the beginning. Um, and that's when I thought, I said, I wish there was a site where we could go to to get that context to the news, where somebody who has not been following a news for, some lo for, for a while can go to this platform to get that news to understand the context. And that's when I was inspired um, to create this to create history, uh, I've been working on this uh, under the guidance of Professor Flink and Global Journalist. Uh, the site, the aim is to provide complete, concise, and conceptual news briefs. Next slide. As you can see, the front page of the website, um, we're working on the prototype right now. The front page is the map of the world. Uh, the idea is that users will be able to zoom into countries. They'll be able to interact with the map. Uh, 
Most of the news today that we consume is without any geographical information. We talk about Syria, but so many of us don't even know where Syria is located. Uh, we talk about news without having context of the news. Uh, so, the, so on Justry, uh, you can click into, you can click uh, on any country, it would zoom into the country and it would give you the top news briefs that are associated with that country. The news briefs are not going to talk about the current news event. They are going to talk about the context to that news. Um, and you can see with every news brief, you can click into a news brief and it will drop a pin on the country, on the location in the country to where that event had taken place. The hope is that when the news, the website does go live, people from all around the world will be able to submit those news briefs. We have a submit button there uh, on top on our header and it would open up a form where um, users will just be able to type in their news brief. They will have to provide two to three local news sources for verification. If they're first person witness to the news, they would have to include pictures or videos. Once we get the, once we get the content, we will have a couple of people who will be only engaged in verifying that news before we upload it onto the website. So through this way, we would even get news about areas that have been underreported or are not being, are not being focused on by the mainstream news media. Um, and one of the kind of the last things we wanted to leave you with is just that this has been a real class for experimentation. Um, so one of the things we were talking about that we've really valued about this class is that it's very much self-driven. Um, and so what we get to choose kind of what we focus on, um, we do the research for it, we set our own curriculum. And then at the end of the day, um, there's not you know a safety net. We can fail and we can learn from our failure. Um, and we can also learn from our successes that we have. So thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Team Global Journalists. The final thing that, um, that I would say, and you've heard this sort of theme um, through a lot of different speakers, what we do is we say, you have 10 hours every week that you're accountable to create, to play, to break stuff, to try stuff, um, to basically uh, come up with construction and deconstruction of systems and products and um, find out what works. And wherever possible, when you find something that works, do a little bit more of that. But also, and a couple of people have said this, and I think it's the most important thing, particularly for students, fail. In fact, you can't succeed in this class unless you fail a lot. And so what we try to do is we try to put them in a situation where our kids are failing, and in the process of doing that, they're succeeding, but also they're succeeding. And we're giving them the tools, the framework, and the background to do that. And then with this curriculum and with their interest and innovation, it seems to be working in the six newsrooms that we're working with. Thank you very much.